We going? Yep. All right. Hello. Coming to you live here. First episode, kind of a rip the bandaid off episode here. Uh, the Dirty Leather Podcast. Uh, my name's Clint Goss. I'm Danny Fisher. Yeah, and um, we're going to get started off today, opening uh, wise, in terms of some content, some uh, comments we're going to have. Um, I'm going to be starting talking about the NL East race, my Atlanta Braves. I think Danny's got the intention of speaking some on the AL Central and the Guardians, so I think that's going to kind of get us going here. Any thoughts, Danny? Nope. I'm I'm good to hear about your Atlanta Braves. All right, well, I'll go f- don't don't mind me if I'm being coarse about it. I think it's pretty easy to get started as far as Atlanta and then at least uh, we're uh, dominating it. Um, I was expected regression from the Mets this year versus last year. I mean, I even heard that from Mets fans themselves. As you can see from my Twitter handle, uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Mets Twitter is very serious, undoubtedly. Uh, have a good time with them. But, I mean, you were even hearing out of Mets Twitter and Mets fans that they expected some regression from last year, even with all their big spending. little surprised to see them 17-19 right now heading into tonight, and that's not commenting on any game happening currently or happened today. This is just as far as last evening. Um, I'm personally surprised to see the Marlins be our main comp right now. They're about a half game ahead of anybody else. Um, young developing team. At the same time, can modestly sit here and, and know that we're, what, 36, 37 games in, Philadelphia is going to wake up some. The Nationals are, you know, showing up and doing a presentation trophy. And, uh, yeah, we're not really thinking about that too much. But uh, the Mets are going to wake up. Some of the Phillies are going to wake up. I know the Mets have been a little banged up, obviously kind of got off to a bad start with Edwin Diaz this year. But just kind of specifically jumping into the Braves, I wanted to talk about that more than the East, because frankly, not to sound like a joke, just to talk about in the East right now. We're only about 36, 37 games in. The Braves already have an eight-game lead on anybody. Um, huh. don't, and and this is a Braves team that, you know, this will sound annoying, and you might say, Clint, shut up, and that's fair. Uh, it hasn't even really hit stride in a lot of places. I mean, I think for starters – you know, people first want to mention Acuna. I'd start with somebody that I think struggling. I think Austin Riley really hasn't cranked it up. That's somebody that you could argue has been slumping a little bit since even August. Uh, I think heading into this year, you know, got him here hitting about 246 as far as average. That That's going to be low for him versus, you know, a Matt Olson power hitter first baseman. 250 is a little more standard for him. That's not as much of a number that we look at as him hitting fifth or sixth highest in the order and not be excited about it. Um, but Riley, somebody that needs to turn it on, seeing a lot of struggles, you know. Ansby Walk last year, I agreed with it. A lot of fans disagree with it. A lot of fans did agree with it. I think this team has shown management, Alex Anthopoulos and company, they'll pay elite players, they'll pay elite money for elite players, but they're not going to pay elite money to tier below elite players. And that's with respect to Swanson. I think he was a tier below elite guy versus say if Freddie Freeman was an elite guy who was offered elite money. But the shortstop spot's not exciting for me personally right now. I mean, this could be fact-checked. I think I am I could be one off here from last night. But through 36 games, for him to have something like six errors, uh, for Vaughn Grissom, the guy that we're thinking we were going to plug in here, um, Quite frankly, we've had surprisingly uh, kind of a strong um, on from Orlando RC as far as the shortstop spot. I think he's going to be the guy to take it over. I think between Vaughn Grissom and Shoemake, young guys, um, one of them's probably about to get handed a one-way ticket out of town. Um, wouldn't be surprised. Um, those are that's another area I really don't think this team's hit its stride. Yeah, going into the bullpen, good Lord, if, if you'd asked me going into this year who I felt the most confident about as far as the bullpen, I would have said A.J. Minter, kind of that dog, kind of that hog, kind of, kind of that middle of the late inning guy that comes in with heat. And he's just getting, you know, pardon me, he's getting his ass waxed this year. An ERA exactly 7.13. I know that's only 30-something games in. That That's concerning, obviously. 
Rosiel Iglesias has, has been out with an injury. I mean, he's only hung two innings this, this year. That's been disappointing. That, I, I think not to go into every single bullpen guy, because I don't think that's necessary in terms of time, but I think that'd be the two main comments as far as those are two areas that are lacking versus what could be down the stretch. You know, not really that that intimidator in the mid innings right now, not able to get that in the mid to late innings. And the two guys you usually would. And then lastly, and I'll wrap up the Braves talk because I've been rolling for a while. Um, you know, so much as Braves fans, we talk about the 90s and the fact that that team, that franchise was in it about every year and walked out with one World Series to show for it. There's about a one or two year window here where the Braves have got a strike if they don't want to make this be like the 90s and us have won the one and not do it again. I think a main example of that is, is the Max Freed contract. Freed is an elite level player, like I said, um, when I mentioned Freed and Swanson and kind of those situations we had. Expect the Braves to go as far as elite money for Freed, but until that happens, it hasn't happened. That is someone that on contract year, this would be a time to cash in. He's an elite left-hander. You know, beyond him, you've gotten what you expected out of Charlie Morton this year as a guy long in the tooth, happy to have, um, you know, to even scroll. I mean, Charlie's sitting about a 3-3 three, three RA. He's hanging in terms of innings with the top three guys on the staff. Um, four, four quality stars, Evan, and um, a 4-3 record. Like I said, I mean, he, you're getting what you're expecting. <laughs> I had to mention this one stat for Spencer Strider. You know, he is that intimidator as far as the starting rotation. 15.1 Ks per nine innings. Uh, that's badass. Um, that's something as a kid, once we got past the Smoltz days, we I longed for was the intimidator as far as the starter, as far as the aces. He's that. Um, and it's, going back, you know, lastly, going back to my comments about this is really a team I think hadn't hit strides in a lot of areas. And Kyle Wright's year after being a 20-win guy last year and an all-star. Well, what's happening there? On top of that, you're struggling as far as the fifth in the rotation. Mike Soroka dealing with these. That's a guy that I admittedly threw some uh, kiss of death on in terms of, you know, an Achilles injury, and he's been banged up. The ability's there. He's a former all-star. And then Ian Anderson is a guy that, you know, is a classic two-pitch pitcher that I think there's been a case of kind of guys have timed him up and needs to develop a third pitch in his repertoire. Um, so Kyle Wright is a spot in there as far as the fifth spot in the rotation as far as those two guys I mentioned the bullpen not coming along as far as Riley struggling as far as getting hot for the last couple of months as far as finding out the shortstops saying all these I just listed you know and like I said in summation here I just listed six or seven things as if I'm describing a 500 or less ball club view and we're 25 and 11 in up eight games I didn't uh, ask your thoughts about your guardians. Uh, well, my team's a little less exciting. Uh, let's see. Well, we had a nice run last season. Obviously, great September. Going into the postseason, took the Yankees to five. We didn't have. I mean, I never thought through that whole series. They had a chance of actually winning it. You know, just how the team was built. But it was a great building year. You know, obviously this season you come in, uh, you sign Josh Bell. I thought it was a fine signing going into the season uh he hasn't really heated up yet and I, I don't think he is but the problem still with this team is they still can't find the ball out of the ballpark um and that's going to catch up to them and keep catching up to them because when you see good pitching usually they don't make mistakes and if you make you make a mistake you have to hit the ball out of the park and that's something that's going to always catch up with this team not being able to hit a home run and then i mean just going into the season you lost tristan mckenzie your starting pitcher for maybe till June now who was supposed to take that next leap like most guardian pitchers do from, you know, Corey, Corey Kluber did it, Carlos Carrasco, Trevor Bauer, and then Shane Bieber, all these guys. And it was McKenzie's turn to take that Cy Young leap and got hurt. Then he had Aaron Savali who was pitching pretty well in his first few starts of the season. Then he went on the injured list. So you had your second and third guy out. So they've been trying out new pitchers, been bringing up Logan Allen and Tanner Bybee from, Triple A, they've actually pitched pretty well, but it's today they play the Tigers, got shut out uh, five nothing. Yesterday they scored what I think two runs and one against Detroit, 
but it's been the offense has been awful. The catching situation again has been uh, awful. They brought in Mike Zanino this off season. He's one of the worst catchers defensively and not offensively. Uh, they're just, I mean, they replaced Austin Hedges last year who could actually defend. I couldn't, he couldn't hit the ball or anything, but now you got Zanino who can't do either. And it's just, it's been a mess back there um, for years now. And I mean, they have, uh, Josh Naylor's brother, Bo Naylor down in AAA, who's ready to come up. Well, was supposed to be ready to come up and they just haven't pulled the plug on him to come up to the majors. So we'll see what happens there. But I mean, this team's sitting in the third place right now in the central at uh, 17 and 20. And I say that, and they're only two and a half games back behind Minnesota. So at least we're not, you know, like in the AL East where everyone's above 500 and we're sitting here. So it's not bad, but again, this team usually starts off slow and then, hit stride in June, July, August, September. And so we'll see what happens, but they also have a problem at short with a med Rosario, who I think he came in third last year in the hits in the American league. And I mean, I don't know why, uh, if he can hit the ball ever again, he'll be a free agent at the end of the year. It's been uh, a lot. And the, last year they had a, what, like over 20 guys make their major league debut. And I mean, Oscar Gonzalez, who was the postseason hero last year, numerous times, he's already back in triple a. So that's been a problem. And it's just not a problem with these guys. It's been a problem to the system. They've been able to develop so many pitchers. They just can't develop positional players, really. And they have a hard time developing outfielders. And I don't know what's going on through year one to year two, but these guys regress. And it's just this team has been so close so many times, and I don't know when they're ever going to do it. I mean, it's been over 70 years. Like you brought up the 90s with the Braves. I mean, the – they were the Indians then. I mean, you had 95 when you lost the Braves and you had 97 when you lost the Marlins. I mean, and then you go fast forward to 16 against the Cubs. I mean, it's been just heartbreak city in Cleveland. And I don't know when this team, when they're going to do it, will they do it? And I mean, you've had Terry Francona as your manager for the last decade. He's, I mean, he's what, 63 years old, 64. So he's getting up there in age. So I don't know when, what the window in years. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, you not, you know, to cut you off from your point, but you so much of what you said made me go, ah, oh, I was thinking that as far as Atlanta. And wow, that's a good point. I could add to that. Like, for example, I, I can't remember the specific player's name that you just said. You were like, oh, I don't know that he'll ever be able to hit again. To tie back, speaking about shortstop struggles with, with Vaughn Grissom and just another example of something that's not clicking. Braves can't get over having this Marcel Azuna dead weight contract hanging around their neck this is like you shot a you shot cattle and hung it around your neck like this is dead weight with respect he's actually the last couple games decided he wants to hit for some power but i I thought that was an interesting point just speaking of two teams that are kind of signed up with somebody that you're like we're we we know it's time to move forward there we we can't move grissom for example into the outfield because you're stuck with the zuna there with such a high price tag and other thing i was going to mention was just you, you talking about you mentioned 95, you mentioned 97 with the Marlins, 95 with the, you mentioned 16 with the Cubs. You know, you, you, you were joking about, oh, my team's not quite as exciting. You know, it's like, man, you take away the Braves winning it two years ago. And obviously, you know, people that consider college football, you know, down here, we've been all excited about the dogs the last two years. But Atlanta and Cleveland are two of the top. I could think, what, about three, we all kind of bond over, you've been at, you You've, you've had the heartbreak. You've gotten close. You couldn't close. Um, so if anybody gets that, I get that. And um, that that was just two points I wanted to add to what you were saying. I didn't mean to cut you off from what you were saying, but I just thought uh, that was interesting. No, that's yeah. I was pretty much done with my uh, Guardians uh, thing. Usually by like June, July, I know what this team's going to do, and hopefully, I mean, last few years, I mean, Minnesota was supposed to run with the division last year, and they collapsed. So. Hopefully that, I mean, we just took two out of three against them in the past weekend, but so we'll see what goes on with this team going into the summer. But as of right now, it's just same old story with the hitting. I mean, some injuries and, but hopefully they heat up. Well, understood. If you're done talking with that, I'd say let's move on. Let's do a little bit of that. See you buddy. Some of that grinds my gears where we just kind of go off on a tangent here in, in a nice way I, i'd say grinds my gears our friend pat pitts here he and some of his buddies are 
refer to a segment like this to see you, buddy. Uh, so those you want to go first, kind of speaking on something on there, or you want me to take it, Danny? Oh, you can go. You can All go. right. Well, quite simply, I'm going to talk about the Angels a little bit today. And there's going to be some moments in here where you or whoever would say, Clint, the Angels are two games back right now. And let me pull that up quick, actually. I wanted to get the exact numbers on that. One second. Angels division. Pardon me, I had that up. There we go. Okay. I'm going to have somebody tell me that they're only three games back after last night. I said two games. It got updated three from last night. Three games back of the Rangers and still sitting a half a game ahead of a team like the Astros, who, if even if you were a casual fan of base, you know is the top five franchise, whether we don't like them or not right now. Um, but first, I, I'm more specifically going to get on to how I don't understand how a team like the Angels I can see here. And you just heard the tone in my voice. You heard – you heard you, you you've known enough of me doing this. I can get fired up. I can be intense. I can be go off on a tangent about it. I couldn't have been more like I'm going to a funeral talking about the Angels right there for a second. Not excited about it for a team that, to put in NFL terms, which you know not to sound annoying, but I think that's easy to relate to some different sports. When I talk about Shohei Otani, when I talk about Mike Trout, if you're an NFL person, and correct me if you disagree, as always. I think of those two as what, like Joe Burrow and Pat Mahomes. You think of basketball, I yeah. think of those two as what, like the Steph level guy. Uh, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. in terms of popularity, the amount of talent that these guys can be commercialized beyond words. I, I mean, I this and this is not factual. I did not fact check this. Otani's making something like forty million in endorsements a year, and the guy. I mean. When, and like I said, you might tell me, Clint, that's totally wrong. But fair enough. Are you talking about a guy playing for the Angels? Who's ever heard anybody talking about the Angels other than those two? And, and to go a little deeper, um, <laughs> I know we all know the common comment with the Angels is they can't get any pitching going to go along with these guys. And I understand investing a lot of money in top-heavy players like this, you know, for a guy like Otani who's coming up on a contract year, kind of like how I talked about Max Fried being an elite level player on a contract year. It's going to be absurd what Otani's looking at. I mean, and to me, he's going to have the biggest contract we've ever seen. The Yankees of the world, the world, the Mets of the world, et cetera, et cetera. Some people mention my Braves. I don't expect us to cut a check like that and hang with those guys. Could happen. That'd be really cool. But I know the common comment is that they don't get the pitching around them. But, you know, it's like last night I was messing around and I said, I want to see the top four draft picks they've had the last couple of drafts. And I know there's development. I know there's all that. But I just kind of wanted to look at it. 2022 draft, two of your top four picks are pitchers. 2021 draft, your five picks are all pitchers. The 2020 draft, two of your top four picks are pitchers. 2019 draft, five of your top eight picks are Skip to 2017, 2018, they took a gap. I mean, six pitchers in the top 15 picks over and over and over. I'm like getting on four there because you're not getting anything. I mean, uh, it'd be corrected, but I saw that they were at least in the 20s in terms of bullpen performance right now. Don't really understand that. One other spot right here. That's exactly what I wanted to see in terms of. I mean, geez, I'm looking at names right here. Urschel hitting 303, Rendon hitting 295. The, the, the lowest name of mention on here is hitting 248. And there's nothing to show for it. I mean, I, I guess I'm getting a little more quantitative versus quantitative saying this in terms of them being commercialized. But we're, we're talking about two guys that – what's their playoff memory? Playoff memory going to be? What, what, what are you going to do if you walk out of this year – Saying you're, you know, say Otani leaves, because I'm just assuming he's going to leave. I'm going to be negative, Nancy, about it. Don't think they're going to retain him. You're telling me that we're going to look up and what, what's the coolest thing we're going to say about Otani when he left? We, we sold a bunch of jerseys and he played really great in the World Baseball Classic. Like, cool, that had nothing to do with the Angels. I'm, it, I guess commercializing them, but I don't think anybody's talking about the Angels. They're talking about Otani. They're talking about Trout. Those, those guys are almost like their own brands. And I know players are all their own brands. You could look at my Braves and say Clint Matt Olson's his own brand. Ozzy Albies is his own brand. Ronald Cunha's his own brand. But I 
think I think if you, I think if I fast forward to the end of these, if these guys stayed with the Angels for the rest of their careers, ten years, whatever it is, I don't have the facts on their age off the top of my head. I'm not convinced I'm ever going to have a, a a Hall of Fame resume at her in terms of some playoff mention for them. I think the best thing I'm going to say about those guys is, man, remember that World Baseball Classic when they played against each other? That was really cool. <laughs> I just, you know, I just I I put myself in the in the place of one of their fans, and I say, where are we getting over the hump here? Or, 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 I mean, someone might tell me, they might say, Clint, you mentioned all those pitchers in the last four or five drafts they've invested in. They're coming. More so than I know, admittedly. And I'd say, okay, fair enough. I, I just, I don't know. I, I wonder, where, where's your time to strike? Where, where, where's your time where you see Trout's prime kind of wrapping up and he's plateauing and heading down, heading south versus north? Where, where, where is it? I don't, I don't know. Where are we? maximizing this i just for a sport that i think does the worst job of any of the commercialized big sports in terms of marketing their players nationwide i'm just like i'm saying in the place of angels fans say on the west coast when i'm thinking i'll put myself as a guy over here on the east coast it's irrelevant those guys are possibly the two most talented players i've seen in this generation i'm not talking about like when you and i were kids i'm these last couple of years. If you ask me 20 years from now about how, what I'd say, those guys were super talented and man, they could do some really cool staff pumping in the regular season, but they never got to dance in October. I just think that's disappointing. Would you feel sad? I, I did the football, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, and I'm going to hush. I did the football parallel earlier about saying, I think these guys are the Joe Burrow and the Pat Mahomes of pro base. Could you imagine if Pat Mahomes hadn't even gotten to a divisional round <laughs> imagine if joe burrow hadn't even played in a lock hard could you imagine if we were sitting here right now we were talking about lesser quarterbacks that they're they're playing deep into the super bowl with the afc nfc championship it, it, the equivalent of we're sitting here talking about lesser talent saying oh yeah they, they took it deep even teams that haven't even clinched haven't even finished it like you know not even taking a run that's all i have to say about it yeah i mean it's also hard. I mean, like, obviously, we both live on the East Coast, so it's like, first of all, they're they're in a city where there's a bigger baseball team with the Dodgers, and then nobody watch. I mean, who watches an Angels game and stays up for ten o'clock at night to watch the Angels? I mean, nobody does. So it's just hard for them. But yeah, but I, I do want to make one thing. Our good friend Tyler Lamb uh, had a question. Thoughts on the Red Sox hot start? I mean. I have to say, as an AL guy, yeah, I'd like to hear. Yeah, I have to say, you know, they've been playing pretty well. I mean, that division is just absolutely insane right now. You have the Rays, obviously, like eight games in first in the East. And then you have the Orioles, who finally have gotten out of the basement, who look getting all these picks that they've, you know, from 2015, 16, 17, all these young guys up there. The Blue Jays, who obviously made the playoffs last year, and then going to, I mean, th that's a fun division to watch. I don't know if what the Red Sox are going to do is come, you know, late in the season, but it hey, just keep if, if, you know, they are in fourth place, you have the Yankees in fifth place. So, I mean, but it's kind of weird looking at the ALE standings in May where you have the two big powerhouses in that uh, di division. Are you taking the Yankees seriously at this point? Um, I will never count the Yankees out of anything. So... I will t I will take the Yankees to be uh, in October, but I have fallen in love with this Rays baseball team, and maybe they're my pick now to win the World Series, and that might be a little uh, thing. But again, they're still the Rays, so they'll probably figure out a way to lose it. But uh, I still think the Yankees come out of the base. I I'm saying the basement. They're like twenty one and seventeen. <laughs> like. <laughs> They put them in another division. They're in the lead or second. Yeah, I mean, look in the central. I mean, they're yeah, they're ahead of it. So, yeah. I wanted to real quick, just having not looked into it before too much, just in response to Tyler's question. I just kind of wanted to look at just just some basic bat and average OPS as far as what they're seeing, as far as this boss. See if anything just jumped out at me crazy. Oh, my boy Adam Duvall only played in a couple games, but got a big average. Well, this is, you know, I mean, as far as looking at South, a lot of hitting, looking at some of the heavier guys like Devers hitting 245 average. 
Hell, they're, it's kind of the same argument you could say for my Braves is, damn, they got some areas right here where they had not even really turned on. I mean, to go back to your point about how how top heavy in terms of the volume of wins per team in terms of the AL East, it's that's a team that could crank it up and start making some noise. I mean, how, how much did we have the Red the Sox back eight games right now? That, that's not yeah. a team versus say like we were talking about my NL East, you know, and I won't be like I can't think of the reporter's name last year that were trolling to the state and said, oh, the NL East is over, won it, yeah, yeah, you know, they choked, they were the Mets, what they do. Versus me saying I'm well, I'm so comfortable in the NL East, we're winning that one. An eight game back Sox could get on a surge and come take over a young Orioles team. I mean, I thought you made a great point a second ago talking about the Orioles saying, you know, kind of like how I talked about the point about have the Angels cashed in on any of that pitching they've invested in terms of draft capital? You made the point of the Orioles are cashing in on capital. last five, six years that it's been all the farms there. Cut out for a second there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. We go. On the flip side of, of that, a, a young team like the Orioles, a team like the Rays, who's never spending versus a team like Boston, the Yankees, any of the take over those top two. The Jays, the Sox, the Yankees have been there a little bit more than, than some of these guys. That, that thing's alive. That's alive. Yeah. It's that's going to be very interesting just throughout the whole season. I mean, some teams are you could say are already out of it. So if you want to, if you're a fan of uh, your team that's not going to make it the playoffs, just watch the AL East the rest of the year because that's going to be something to glue yeah, your eyes to. As an NFL fan, I've grown, grown quite accustomed to the art of the. I'm going to gain a second team for the year here, getting into the late end. So yeah, if, if I I won't have to do it as a Braves fan, but I. I to, to add to Tyler and his, you know, ever constant Boston fandom, I could get behind a, a Red Sox in that division. I could get excited about that. My wife's a Yankees fan. Her family's all Yankees fans. I don't participate in that. I hate the Yankees like the mass consensus. So I could get behind a Boston. I think that is a team that can definitely surge. I mean, they're sitting here. It's like you said a second ago. They're 21 and 16 and sitting eight games back. He's eight and two in their. Thirteen and seven at home. They're eight and nine on the road. It's not like they're going out and get sucked when they're. I mean, we say, "Oh, this is a team that could heat up. This is a team that could pick it up and get hot." Well, they're eight and two in the last ten. I mean, it's <laughs> not nah, getting repetitive yeah. there, but absolutely, Tyler, Tyler should be excited about his socks. They got plenty of room to go. Yes, they do. All right. Uh, did you have any more? Uh... Grind your gears, or you wanted to get to? No, and I'll say this: with the time we have left, I wouldn't get going on it. If I just made one last note, I, I was going to pick at the Cardinals a little bit. I, I was going to pick at the Cardinals being last in the NL Central. Um, I, I think I read the stat here last night that in terms of bullpen efficiency, they're coming in at 24th. Ar- Arenado is just really struggling yeah, versus having a guy like Gold on strong. That's just a team in terms of looking at kind of a win window where they've been in the last year, two, three years, projecting where they wanted to be this year, the next year or two, they, they, they got to crank it up. I mean, I, I'd like to real quick, if I got, to, got a second to pull up just kind of how far back they stand. Pardon me. Wow. That's blinding to see that the Pittsburgh Pirates, Got a fraternity brother that's a <laughs> diehard Pirates fan. He's as loyal as they come. That makes me smile, quite frankly. 21 and 17 Pirates leading that division. I could have sworn I was drunk reading that. But, wow. I mean, the, you know what? No, I will give you, lastly, a grind my gears character. You're the Cardinals, and you're sitting here three games <laughs> back of the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, it's not pretty. Get out of town. But they're not a Goldsmith and company – and the tradition of that team and the poor effort, I don't think the Reds management even half wants to field a team past Joey Votto marketing campaigns. That That's pretty poor, man. That was, <laughs> that'd be my last comment if you asked me for one. To, to be sitting here seven and a half back and the other three, I mean, the Pirates are up, Brewers are half back, Cubs three back, the Reds are and a half back. Yeah. Wolf, wolf dog. That's bad. 
yeah, it's not a pretty sight if you're St. Louis at this moment. But all right. Any final thoughts before we wrap this up? I think they've heard enough out of me at this yeah. point. All right. All right. So we will be back next Wednesday, same time, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And thanks for listening to the show, guys. All right. As always, thanks, Danny.